Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. And amongst all the stress and anxiety and disappointment of the last few days, there are still reasons to be excited amongst this manager search at Celtic Football Club. It's time for us to identify and then appoint the right man to steer the club forward and hopefully bring more success to Celtic. But who is it going to be? That's the question. There is so many names being thrown out there. So many candidates that it could potentially be. The journalists are suggesting names. The bookies are putting odds on everyone. Yeah, the search is on. Let's have a look at some of the most realistic candidates to become next Celtic manager. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. It would be much appreciated as we head into this busy time at Celtic Football Club. It's going to be hectic. There's going to be so many names, rumours. It's going to be one that's hard to follow, but I'll try my best along every step of the way to keep you updated on what's probable and what's not. And also, let's dream a little, you know, let's throw out some names that, you know, we could dream about and maybe Celtic will ask the question too. But anyway, today we're going to sit down and I'm going to go over five or six candidates for the next Celtic manager, ones that I think are probably the most realistic and offer my opinion to each of them. Some of them I would love at the club, some of them not so much. That's the point in today's video. We're going to see who I think could be best suited and we're going to run through each of the candidates as quickly but as detailed as we can. Now, you already know that Brendan Rodgers is my man. I've picked him as the one that I want. I made a full 20-minute video on it yesterday. Check that out if you like. But realistically, I know that Brendan Rodgers probably isn't going to come back to Celtic. There's too many factors there right now, which means it's probably not going to happen. So we're going to ha I'm going to have to accept that, and I'm going to have to look at other options. But trust me, there's other names I'd be more than happy, just as happy to see as Brendan Rodgers come to Celtic. And I'm going to talk about a few of them today. So as Fabrizio Romano would say, I'm pretty sick of him actually. Pretty sick of him, I shouldn't bring him up. As he would say anyway, here we go. Here are six names who are leading the way uh, in the talk of becoming the next Celtic manager. Enzo Maresca, he is the man who is leading the way right now. He's the bookies' favourite and he's the most spoke about as becoming the next manager of Celtic Football Club. Why? Well, the main reason is strong, strong links with the City Football Group, of course. He's currently the assistant manager to Pep Guardiola at Manchester City, where they have had a fantastic season. They could complete a treble on Saturday should they beat Inter Milan in the final of the Champions League. But that City Football Group link, which seems to become stronger and stronger as the years go on here at Celtic, could it become even stronger with appointing Pep's assistant, Enzo Maresca? Now, he's only had one crack at senior management so far, and that was at Parma. Um, at the start of the 21-22 campaign. Remember, he was linked with the Celtic job heavily when it was the the, the summer of Postacoglu and Eddie Howe and all that was going on. Maresca was one of the names. He ended up becoming Palmer manager. It, it did not go to plan. It, it went the opposite of good. And at the time, I remember when he lost the Palmer job, I remember thinking to myself, wow, we've maybe dodged a bullet here. He managed 14 games with Parma in Serie B. And uh, he won four. Four out of 14. Not the greatest. It didn't go too well. Now, you obviously need to sit there and go, okay, was it the kind of job where he was going to walk in and succeed straight away? Was it going to work? The team was in a bit of a, a nick. They were in that division. You know, it's not like it's fair to judge him off of that one job. But so far, his, his dabbling into management has not gone to plan. And for me, I would be very underwhelmed if we give him the job. I'm not going to beat around the bush, even though he's the favourite. It's it's the last guy I want right now. I think that just because he has City Football Group links doesn't mean that he necessarily has to be the next Celtic manager. Look, it went very well with Ange Postacoglu. Ange Postacoglu is very different. He was management uh, manager of you know a, a J League winning side, uh, an Australian League winning side, the Australia national side at the World Cup. Maresca doesn't have that same pedigree behind him. And just because he's assistant to Pep Guardiola as well doesn't mean he's going to be an automatic success anywhere. Now, he could come up and he could play good football here, but is it going to work? I'm not so sure because there's no evidence of that so far. And I think that's a risk. That's a gamble. I just think that that's a very lazy argument. Well, he's assistant to Pep. He must be good. It's a reason he's assistant. Um, he's the Dwight Schrute of the operation here. 
Um, I just don't really buy into the whole Maresca stuff right now. I think the biggest benefit of getting Maresca would be the style of football. Uh, and that's it. it would be very similar to what we had under Ange Postacoglu. It wouldn't take too much playing about or altering what we do. He could come in and there could be that consistency in what we've done over the past two years. Is that worth the sacrifice of maybe a, a manager who has more experience and someone who's ready to come in and, and, and be used to the, the, the pressure of managing a football club and, and winning games? I don't necessarily think so, but he is the favourite right now. Let's move on to the people's favourite, Kjetil Knutsen of Bodo Glimt. He is the one that most people want. I've done all my live streams, all my videos, and through all my tweets as well. In the comments section of each of them, there's one name that stood out the most amongst them all, and that is Kjetil Knutsen. He is being suggested by so many Celtic fans for all the right reasons. He is someone who I could truly get behind if he becomes or emerges as the favourite for the job. Will it be Newtson? Being realistic, I think we've got a job on our hands if we were to convince him to be Celtic manager. I think it's one that's worth going all in on, and I think that if we could have given him the assurances and the backing that Ange Postecoglou would have got this season, or any other top manager would get this season, I think he's someone who we could maybe convince to come to Celtic, but it's going to be a tough challenge. Ajax are interested. And let's be real, Ajax is probably a more attractive job in, in the grand scheme of things. It's another club that's huge, they're massive, they are in European football all the time, but they probably play in, in a division that's slightly better than ours. They have a better chance of, of doing stuff in Europe. You know, they've made it to the Champions League semi-finals and Europa League finals in the last few years. I think that that's probably a more attractive... There's more money to spend as well. They've developed better players. It's probably more attractive for Knutsen if he was to choose between the two. The other thing is, obviously, it's mid-season in Norway right now. Is he ready to leave Bodo Glimt quite yet? I think that either Ajax or Celtic probably has that pull factor for him. But he might want to stay there. Who knows? It might be a tough one to try and convince. He absolutely battered us when Celtic took on Bodo Glimt last year in that conference league tie. Um, they made us look amateur. And it's a team that Celtic should have been comfortably beating. But he overachieved in Europe. He took them far. They were unlucky uh, to fall to Roma, who went to win the competition. And he developed so many great players over there. Now, that's the question that probably will be asked of Knutson, was it more down to the players he had at his disposal or him? But I think it'd be unfair to take that away from him. I think he's done a fantastic job. He probably deserves a crack at one of these jobs like Celtic or Ajax. And it, should he be interested in the job, I think it's one Celtic should have serious conversations with. I'd be all up for it. I think the style of football, once again, is, is one that would be attractive at Celtic Park. One that we could easily kind of gel into with the players to our disposal. Not the exact same as Ange Postecoglou's, but not miles apart either. Attacking football is what we need, and I think that's what you'd get with Knutson. And he is one of the most realistic options, should we choose to give him the backing that we'd have gave Ange, as I said. Davy Moyes. Good old Moisey. Um, give it Moisey to end of the season. Um, I would never, ever knock back David Moyes as a potential Celtic manager. Would he be my first choice? Probably not. Now, this is very dependent on what happens with his future at West Ham tonight. He has the opportunity to... Make ha it's the biggest game of his managerial career. It's a European final, a chance to win the Conference League against Fiorentina. It could very much determine his future with West Ham. If he loses it, he might get the chop. If he wins it, his future's probably in his hands. There has been talk of him wanting to leave West Ham. There's been talk of him in recent years wanting to come back to Scotland. This could be a golden opportunity should he be one of the top names on the Celtic boards list. Now, I understand he might not be the most attractive option on the planet. David Moyes doesn't really scream, you know, spectacular by any means. But what he does have, and what I won't let anybody say he doesn't have, is the fact that he is a class coach, quality manager, and he's been one of the most probably underrated managers in, in, in Premier League history recently anyway. Done a tremendous job at Everton. He's done a brilliant job at, at his second spell at West Ham. It's just so unfortunate that he's one big chance and that one big job at Manchester United went the way it did. And I think he was unfairly dismissed. It's obviously speaking from, you know me, I like Man United. I, I, I don't think he should ever have got the sack. I think he was treated very harshly. Uh, and he was following in the footsteps of the greatest manager of all time, for God's sake. He inherited such an ageing side. To hold that part of his career against him 
I think would be very unfair. And it took him a few years to find his footing again. But I think with West Ham now, look, he's guided them to a European final. He, he took them really far. He should have probably done better last year. But the semi-finals of the Europa League last year, he's done a tremendous job with West Ham. When especially, considering the circumstances, you know, people thought he was doomed. People thought he wasn't good enough. They thought he'd get sacked. He's proved them all wrong. And despite a, a kind of tedious league season this campaign, he's, look where he is with them. He's a tremendous coach and he always has been. And I think that you'd be foolish to say he's not good enough for Celtic or anything like that. I know he's 60 years of age. It's only two years older than Ange, remember. Someone who's has really been there and done it in football. Wouldn't be my first choice, but I certainly would welcome him if he was given the job. Ted, I, I can't I, I can't remember that part. Oh, man. Jesse Marsh. Yes, Jesse Marsh is up next. And he is someone who I just feel so sorry for over the past year or so of his career. Because someone who's ceiling was so high has probably been hurt a lot by what's happened with his last two jobs with Leipzig with Leeds United it's not going to plan for Jesse Marsh should Celtic be a, an option for him to re revitalize his career to rejuvenate himself a lot of people might say no for me once again open arms I would welcome Jesse Marsh I, I can put aside what happened at Leeds I think Whoever was in charge of that lead side over the past year or two was going to find himself in the same position. Dog awful side. Um, yeah. I think that that would have happened with most managers. So I, I'm, I'm willing to forgive and forget. I think the big one is obviously his job with Leipzig, which just went pfft, down the pan. Didn't work out at all. But you look before that, he had a fantastic coaching career. Done a great job at Salzburg. Great job at New York Red Bull as well. And he's someone whose style of football would, would just fit so well here at Celtic. Uh, I think it's one that might be hard for a lot of fans to buy into because of the whole American thing. But I think we're now at a point where we as a supporter at Celtic anyway have to be beyond that. We've just welcomed the big Aussie engine who at first we thought, what's this? And he rocked our world. I think Jesse Marsh could do something similar and I would I would never be against the option of bringing him in. I like him as a, a guy. I think his personality is fantastic. I think the videos and such that you see of him with his teams and in the changing rooms and such shows how much of a, a, a character he is and how, how much he can drive teams on. Um, it's a project, Jesse Marsh. Would it be the project that Celtic need right now? Maybe not. But I would be very happy to see someone like him through the door. And I think that giving him a chance at Celtic would be well worth it. A lot of you might not agree with me, um, but I think so. The only thing is, I have heard certain things that would suggest that Jesse Marsh is not interested in the Celtic job. But he's obviously still up there in the bookies' favourites right now. Here's one that popped out of nowhere last night. Didn't expect it. Just came right out the blue. And that's Kieran McKenna of Ipswich Town. Now, hear me out. At first, when I seen this, I thought, no, no, we can't do that. Ipswich Town, they were in League One last year in England. We need to aim bigger. We can't be going out and giving the, the, a job the size of Celtic Football Club to someone who has been a manager at the top level for, I think it's just over a year now. I think it was November 2021, if I remember rightly, he was given the Ipswich job. I was like, we can't give a job to, to that size to someone like that but the more I've looked and the more I've read into Kieran McKenna it's one of these ones I can get behind a little bit more I still stick to my gut feeling I wouldn't it wouldn't be my first choice I wouldn't be in a rush to go and offer him the Celtic job and I don't think he is the right man for it but last year at Ipswich wow what a fucking job what a season they finished second in the league promotion to the English Championship I think they scored something like 120 goals in all competitions. They went on a 19-match unbeaten run in League One last season. And this guy is just getting started. He's, what, 37, 38 years of age. He's just getting started. And I genuinely do think that in a few years' time, and I was talking to one of the mates that support Manchester United about this on Twitter, you know, he could be someone that we're looking at like a potter in a few years' time or a deserve in a few years' time, given a chance at a job like Brighton. And then his, his stock rises. That could potentially happen with someone like Kieran McKenna. And if if you're all in on the McKenna bandwagon, now's probably the time to go on in it because I don't know if Celtic will ever get an opportunity like it again. But it's a huge risk. It's it's similar. Like At the end of the day, you could compare McKenna to Scott Brown. Both of them in League One last season. Are they ready to take on a job the size of Celtic? That remains to be seen. Um, but he's someone to keep an eye on, I would say. He also has that kind of 
benefit you could say of of being assistant to a big name like Maresca. I don't necessarily look at it as a benefit by all accounts, but it certainly does help. You know, you're working alongside the greats. But um, McKenna worked alongside Mourinho as number two at Manchester United. And then when Mourinho left, it went on to be Solskjaer and then finally with Ralph Rannick as well. Um, so he's had a very lengthy coaching career now. Um, he could be a fan favourite, I think, if he came in and got things going at Celtic. Uh, at this young age, could be an exciting prospect, but is it one that Celtic are ready to gamble on yet? And finally, the last one that we're going to talk about today, Graham Potter. Realistic? I don't know. Would I take? Absolutely. Of course, Chelsea didn't go to plan, but don't let that take away from how good of a football manager Graham Potter has been throughout his career. He has worked his way to the top like very few names do in this day and age. You know, a lot of people don't start their careers you know, in the back end of beyond, um, trying to work their way up. That's a guy who got promotion from the third tier in Sweden to the second tier in Sweden, won the Swedish Cup, took the side to the Europa League, gave Arsenal a bloody game. And now he's finding himself unemployed again and maybe looking to revitalise his career and win trophies again at a club like Celtic. I don't need to talk too much about Graham Potter. You know all about him. Um, he's hardly an unknown entity. But he is someone that if Celtic speak to and are serious about and, and he was maybe serious about coming and exploring the opportunity they should throw money at him and they should go for him because he is a world class coach I, I really do think that you look at his job at Brighton and the way he re revolutionised them allowed the Zerbi to come in and carry that on none of that would have been possible without the, the work that Graham Potter done there and yeah, I, I just think that he would be an outstanding choice for Celtic. One that's maybe a step too far, but up there with Brendan Rodgers would probably be my favourite and my pick for the job. Let's wrap up this video with talking about someone very briefly. Kevin Muscat, no. No, I'm not having it. Not Muscat. I've seen so many people saying it. No. Just no. That's it. Right, before we end off the video, over the past few hours on Twitter, there have been photos left, right and centre of a Mr... Now, I forgot his first name. Buckingham is the name. Buckingham has been flying about. Not the palace, by the way, but um, his name has been flying around social media, flying around Twitter. Uh, Des Buckingham, there you go. And he could be a shock contender to be the next Celtic manager. You might think to yourself, Ryan, who the fuck the hell is Des Buckingham? He's someone that we'll have to dive into a bit more uh, to, to try and cover everything about him. So keep an eye out. My theory is uh, he's a part of the City Group as well, current head coach at Mumbai City in India. And um, my thinking is that he could potentially be the number two coming in to replace John Kennedy. But we'll need to see what happens. He's been spotted at Glasgow Airport. I, I would be shocked if he's the next Celtic manager. So that's why I'm saying assistant. But the shot with Ange before. So I'm not putting anything to bed quite yet. We'll talk about him a bit more in detail when I find out more about him. When we find out more about why he's in Glasgow. Keep an eye on the channel. Right, okie dokie, that'll do us then. Right, like and subscribe. See you next time.